Now here is a question uh, I find is very interesting. And uh, given that f of x is differentiable and bounded over that uh, all real numbers, and also given that the absolute value of f of x minus f prime of x is less than or equal to 1, we want to prove that the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to 1. Now, okay, it's not, a, it's not that easy because we don't have to start here. You know, this is the first step to take. Now, after several trials, I find this is a very nice proof. Uh, I let g of x is equal to is equal to f of x over e to the x. Now, since e to the x is always a positive, so we can write this one uh, e to the negative x times f of x. Right. And then, <clears throat> then I take a derivative of a g, g prime of x. Well, uh, this is equal to, I can use the quotient, right? E to the 2x and f derivative times e to the x minus f derivative times e x derivative, which is also e x. Right, this one is equal to, uh, after cancel e, as e to x, and this is over x, f of x f prime minus f of x. Yeah, that is good. Then this is a, also I can write to the e to the negative x times f derivative minus f of x. Right? And then, <coughs> Then, um, then I take a negative out, it becomes a negative prime, g prime equal to e to the negative x, f of x minus f prime of x. Then I take a absolute value, right? Absolute value g prime of x is equal. This is always positive. If we just take that that absolute value, this is equal to absolute value f of x minus f prime of x, which is equal to, or according to the condition given, that is less than or equal to 1, right? So this is negative ex. Yeah. So this means that <coughs> Negative g prime of x is between e to the negative x and uh, negative e to the negative x. Right? Just simply according to the inequality. Then uh, that g negative g prime of x. Well, I take uh, the integral. Right? Well, I don't do this way. That means that g negative g of x just integral this one. This is a negative e to the negative x, and this side integral is an e to the negative x. Correct. Then I delete this negative which is multiplied by negative 1. Then I have to invert the in, in, in inequality sign. So g of x is between negative e to the negative x, right? When, when you multiply negative 1, I uh, invert, invert the in, inequality signs, become this. So 
because g of x is f of x over g of x, therefore f of x would be between g x times this one becomes one, right? g of x is a negative one. Yeah, because g of x is equal to f of x over e to the x, and <coughs> excuse me, so we get this one. Then this becomes the absolute value of x is less than less than or equal to one. So that is a very nice proof. Okay, I hope you like it. Thank you.